Hey, what's up, guys? Woody Jacob here to bring you my thoughts on Season 1 of the CW's I Zombie. And, uh, yeah, so I just finished Season 1 of the show tonight, watched the final two episodes. Um, it's currently in the middle of Season 2 right now, I know. And obviously I did like it enough uh, to buy it on DVD for my collection. Don't know why they never released a Blu-ray, though. Kind of odd, but anyway. Um, it's definitely one of the more uh, eye-popping covers in my collection, I'll give it that for sure. And overall, I do like the show a good amount. Um, is it one of my favorite shows out there? No. But don't take that too uh, personally or anything. Don't take that too far. It does fill a certain void when I'm in the mood for it, you know, it hits a certain part of me, a certain part of me that enjoys it that a lot of other shows don't, and, you know, I don't go off and compare it to, you know, other serious, you know, more serious CW shows like the originals or the hundred, this feels more of that comedy vibe, I don't, I don't watch a lot of comedies to be honest, and this is more of a, it's sort of like a dramedy, but you know, it's mostly like a dark comedy mixed in with like a moments of serious drama and of course it's obviously a sci-fi horror-esque thing but you don't take any of it too seriously it's pretty over the top it's silly in the tone um, but really that is one of the show's credits you have to go into it knowing that it's not trying to be something that's not you know it's not trying to be The Walking Dead or anything, you don't need to go off and compare it to The Walking Dead, it's completely <laughs> different than that, trust me. Um, and really, the, I will say the show is very consistent with its tone and how it goes, or not how it goes, but like uh, how consistent it is with the humor and the dialogue per episode, I think it's really consistent in a great way with that. Um, by the way, this won't be one of my longer general season reviews. I know I've done ones, like, for over 30 minutes before. Um, but, you know, there's just not as much I seriously want to talk about the show with the show as, like, ones of, uh, Being Human or The Vampire Diaries. But I did really want to get my thoughts out of there on this. Um, of course, Rose McIver plays our lead, uh, Olivia Moore, more commonly referred to as Liv Moore. Get it? <laughs> And, you know, she's on a boat, and she basically gets scratched and turned into a zombie. And on this show, when, you know, zombies crave brains. When they eat the brains, they gain the memories of the people whose brains they ate. They also gain their uh, personalities, their passions, and, you know, different, like, qualities about them like that. Um, you know, which is pretty interesting, and it plays into the setup of the show which, you know, has Liv working at a morgue, you know, for the, I don't know, I forget where they're at, but, you know, for the police department. And so, when she eats the memories of, you know, like, uh, victims, you know, people who are murdered or things like that, you know, she can kind of eventually figure out what happens to them. And, you know, she's working with Detective, Detective Babineau, and, of course, you know, she plays off like she's a psychic, she has visions and stuff. Which she does, but, you know, obviously doesn't know it's from eating brains and things like that. And most people that see her, they think she looks weird, but she's basically thought of as a, an albino to the public and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, like, procedural type shows, you know, I haven't, I've never really uh, watched any, like, crime you know, procedural dramas or anything like that. That's not what this is, but there are things that are episodic. You know, there are cases of the week that are solved within that episode that never really mentioned again. Once in a while they are, though. Um, but there is a bigger story going on here, and it does build to a conclusion that was kind of, you know, laid out throughout the whole season. Um, so I appreciate that's at least doing that, but it was a little bit hard for, to watch for me just because I like more of a continuing story, you know, not just like uh, Case of the Week here with a little bit, with little bits of the main plot, but it wasn't the worst case of that either, I'll say that. Um, it did keep me pretty entertained throughout, you know, it did keep my attention. Um, like I said, it's really consistent with the humor and, and the way they write the dialogue. It's always pretty, you know, witty and snappy and stuff like that, so I'll praise the writers for that. And Rose McIver, um, as Liv, she is the best empire of the show, man. Um, 
you know, her version of Liv, uh, you know, how she plays her, she's cute, she's nerdy, she's dorky, really intelligent, and then she can also be badass, too. And I, I'm sure Rose McIver has a hell of a lot of fun playing this role, because, like I said, when she eats those range, she gets to take on those personalities, and she basically gets to act differently almost every episode. Um, so that must be a pretty enjoyable role for her, I think. And it shows. I think she has a lot of fun with it. Um... I also have to talk about uh, David Anders as Blaine. He's sort of our main antagonist. Um, you know, I know him as uh, John Gilbert from The Vampire Diaries. It was great to... He was great on that show. I really liked how his character developed in the end of season two of that. And, you know, his character is not as complex in the show, but um, he is uh, one of the more entertaining villains I've seen on TV lately. And he definitely plays him really well you know he's a douche and you can tell he's really really corrupt you know he deals out these brains to different you know people in the city who just happen to be zombies and you know he's a murderer he's a psychopath things like that but the way he talks the way he carries himself you know you're entertained by him and in a way i'm kind of hoping that he just doesn't like end up being killed just because he's the, he's the villain you know i hope they take the character in a, in a different direction um, so, he's a guy you don't think he should like, but you do, and I think the writers realize that's so like kind of play on that too, while also making him pretty cruel and creepy at the same time. So I really like what they do with, what they did with him. Um, glad he's actually going into season two. Uh, Major, you know, what Liv's ex fiance who she broke up with when she, you know, turned into a zombie and stuff like that, he becomes more interesting character as it goes along as he, as he grows, you know, suspicions of what's really going on with the zombies and things like that. He turns into a badass at the end, um, basically trying to take down uh, Blaine, like a military operation, you know, guns are blazing, you know, killing quite a few of Blaine's henchmen before Blaine gets to him. And then, of course, Liv, you know, has to make a choice at the end. She chooses to turn into a zombie to save him. And Major points out to her that, you know, did she really just, uh, do it for him, or did she do it because she wanted him to go on, you know? And, uh, I was happy that as many characters found out what she is at the end as, as there were, um... You know, they did kind of delay uh, their characters knowing it. The only other one who knew was her boss of the morgue. And, you know, they'd help each other out. I like their dynamic. They're sort of like a brother and sister, best friend type of thing. So I like that a lot. Um, I was happy that uh, Peyton ended up finding out uh, within the second to last episode, I think. Um, so that was a really uh, good dramatic moment, too. And it does have really good dramatic moments. Um, I also want to mention... Bradley James, he played Lowell on this, you know, a love interest to live for a couple episodes. Um, Bradley James, of course, being Arthur from Merlin, which is a show I also enjoy from time to time. Gotta watch more of that soon. <coughs> um, he played his role pretty well, too, and Blaine actually ends up killing him, and what Liv's reaction to that it is pretty emotional and really well acted by Rose McIver, so it does have that on the show, too, so I really appreciate its mix. I think it does it pretty well. Um... And then her brother also ends up getting caught in the crossfire at the end. You know, he ends up getting these burns, you know, basically dying. And, you know, you need to, they need to live to give him blood and things like that. But, of course, the zombies don't really bleed much, if at all. And she has to say no at the end. So I'm really wondering how they're going to start off season two, how she's going to explain that. Um, you know, and I also, there are various episodes throughout the season I really enjoyed. It's... Hard to pick out just a few that were my favorites, um, and that's not because there weren't any that uh, I didn't, you know, it's not because there weren't any that I really enjoyed, it's just because each episode really blends well together with the other, you know, it has, like I said, a really consistent feel, and it's really nice to like, watch a decent chunk, chunk of them in one go. Like, I'd watch, like, two or three of them at a time in a day if I could. I, I mean, I'm not one of those extreme binge watchers all the time, but... You know, I think it's good to kind of keep it as, with a pace like that, too. Um, I actually forgot my point. Forgive me, it's getting late. But, uh, yeah, but there, oh, yeah. Okay, there were episodes in particular I did enjoy anyway, though. Um, like, I think it was around episode six. I think it was Virtual Reality Bites or something. She basically ate the brain of this computer hacker or this uh, video game hacker type of dude. Um, I forget exactly what he was, but 
so she basically became addicted to playing video games on the PC and stuff like that. So it was good to see her like eating all these uh, random junk foods and like being so focused on these strategy RPG games and stuff. That's all. It was really funny. Then you see like uh, other brain she be where she kind of like take on the personality of like a bitch or <laughs> uh, excuse my language there or tough or sometimes or like on the last episode she had the brain of a cheerleader so she's really peppy and sort of like so that was fun too and there's every episode has something like that and yeah excuse me while I let my cat out and that again you know draws on the point that you know, it's really a uh, show that can kind of keep your attention because you get to see her act in so many different ways. But this doesn't, like, compromise who the character actually is when she comes down to it. You know, you can still see what she's really going through in every episode and stuff, and that's mixed with, you know, sort of that case of the week thing. Um, and also, there are some good, decent action moments, too, you know, when she goes, uh, when she rages out, as Blaine would say, or you know she basically calls it full-on zombie mode you know their eyes go red and they basically get super strength and that's like the really comic booky part of it um if you guys didn't know this is uh based off of a series from dc comics uh vertigo imprint which is the same thing that lucifer came from i need to catch up on those episodes too um but when you know she goes full-on zombie mode you know there is some good fights there is some blood splatters here and there um so i do like how those go most of the time um and it really gives her that badass moment and i i like to see more of that in season two i hope they did do more of that but i think that'll build more as it goes along and you know uh also at the end you know, Liv had the opportunity to kill blaine but blaine pointed out that if she killed him um a lot of zombies around the city would lose their supply of brains, so that caused them to start panicking. Eventually, they go feral because not all of them will be able to find stuff on their own without, you know, like putting themselves out there. And basically, if, if we lose Blaine, then it's going to be a zombie apocalypse type of thing. Um, and I'd really like the series to actually do that eventually, you know, have like a whole lot of zombies around the city go feral all over the place. I think that'd be really cool. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to do that full out though, but still, I could see more zombies like getting out there and around more often and stuff, have it be more chaotic. I could see that. Um, so I'd like that eventually. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, that's, those are my main thoughts on the show. You know, like I said, not as much as I seriously want to get into as with other shows I do videos on, but still, I thought it was worthy to get my thoughts out there on it. It's a show I do enjoy while I'm in the right mood for it, and I recommend it to you guys too. Um, not everyone's going to like it, but I think you need to go into it with an open mind and enjoy it for what it is. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I may be doing a couple figure reviews coming up of the uh, Mattel Batman v Superman Armored Batman, as well as the WWE Elite page figure. Um, and I mentioned in my last video that my reviews of the 100 Vampire Diaries originals and The Walking Dead will probably be late this week, which really sucks. I hate to do that. Both my work schedule and trying to get in time with my girlfriend too, it's getting kind of muddled, um, but I'll get those to you guys as soon as I can, just adds up on that though, I apologize. S especially sucks because my uh, originals and especially 100 reviews have been doing really well right now, but you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Money's okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, like I said, if you guys enjoyed the video, you can follow me on Facebook, Movie Pilot. Twitter and lookrunswolda.com. Catch you guys next time and uh, peace.